Kids are Viper. I beat heroes 1v1 sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, maybe Fado starts actually drinking the juice that Burning's on and uh, and we start making that a thing again. Draw Ranger, as well as Puck, going to be taken away from NP. Team Secret fearing uh, perhaps a very aggressive push-oriented lineup from NP, while the Weaver and Queen of Pain, heroes that are more difficult to lock down, taken out by NP. And they banned up most of the mo mobility heroes uh, on the side of MP, they want the Bat Rider to shine. I guess there's like Slark uh, still available. Slark Bat Jug, or sorry, Slark uh, Life Stealer Jug, who are all pretty decent versus the Bat Rider, but not at so much as the, in the team fight, I would say. There's not too many uh, cores that Team Secret have really been running. I mean, if you look at those four. Right, that, those are all the MP and mid one heroes that we've been seeing out of them lately. Well, that's an easy one to bring up. Invoker. We haven't seen him too much at this tournament. Seems like he's. What is it, but Merlini? Is it a little bit too slow? Is it he's not? I think he yeah. wants he wants like solo experience, and he doesn't like having supports in his lane. I think you just need an exceptional invoker player to get away with it in this patch because he is difficult to lane. They don't even know who the mid match is going to be. It could even be a dual lane with the IO, and still they're confident enough to pick it up despite not knowing very much about the matchup at all. And it's also a high priority target for Batrider Lasso. He has no real good way to get out of it until you get Lincoln Sphere, which is like 30 minutes in. You might not get to that point of the game. So that's when you have to start looking to the saving supports. Like if it's the Clockwork Hook, if it's the Jakiro Ice Path, if it's the, the next support coming in from Team Secret, how do you actually make that invoker lane like one? Yeah, many of the, um, many of the heroes, support heroes that used to be run against Batrider are kind of out of the meta. We don't see um, Oracle anywhere in there. Vengeful Spirit has taken a serious dive lately. Unless we're going to be running Core Venge. It's always possible that Secret can pull that out. They do at least have the clockwork, right? Great synergy with the Invoker. That's really how Invoker is supposed to shine at this point, right? Is he can't rely just on laning farm. He needs to be able to get some Sunstrike yeah. kills. And if, if that starts to happen, then you get Team Secret using the Jakira the way the Jakira has been being used in last week. It's this kill into very quick push. Liquid Fire lets you force down the lanes very, very quickly, plus giving you the D push. And that's another thing which NP have to work out in their draft. The draw range would have done it beautifully, even if you did mop up the creep wave. The draw is going to be taking out your tier 1 towers very early on. The Bristleback, another good way. Warpath stack up, a lot of physical damage combining with the IO. They'll have no issue standing under towers with those two heroes. And I think with the Bristle, they can invade the jungle very early. I think if you, as soon as you see the Invoker pick and you have, only have an IO Batrider trapped on your side, you can focus on shutting him down heavily, shutting down early, make sure he doesn't farm a lot with the Midas. And I think Bristle is really strong in lane. Also, it's just a good frontliner to run in there. You don't actually care if you get hookshot. He's, Jakiro still has to run away if Bristleback is up in there. I'm wondering what Team Secret now run as their one position. Like up against Bristleback, do you try and go for the Silver Edge Slark you are talking about previously? Do you go for the Mana Burn against it? Uh, well, Mana Burn actually comes out from this hero. Yep, Nyx the Assassin has been one of the staples of this patch so far. Very strong support and works excellently against the Batrider. It's actually great against both Bristle and Batrider. They both have trouble not triggering his Spike Carapace. They have the IO, however, to heal up from the Mana Burn and also keep up people that are stun luck. That's if you can keep the IO alive. Like Nyx Assassin giving you your extra vision. If you can get that initial stun out from the Nyx, invoke a Sunstrike high levels, you're going to keep getting these pops, and then that medic is just not there for NP. And here's another hero we see in the mid a hell of a lot. Yeah, we shuffle our bristle back as into a safe lane position, and Templar Assassin takes a 1v1 against Invoker, a favorable matchup. I thought they wouldn't pick the TA because of the Jakiro. Like, both sides, I thought TA was kind of out of the question. One side, you had Batrider, one side, you had the Jakiro. But it seems like they favor the matchup against the Invoker enough to the point that it's, it's, it's okay for them, despite the mid-game matchup not being so great for him. Yeah, what if you actually do, like if Invoker and Jakiro end up just dual laning this mid and Templar Assassin gets forced out? You're gonna have the, the Wisp rotating over if there's gonna be a Jakiro sitting on you. Uh -huh. So there will be at least some assistance. And it does mean, in which case, our, our Bat Rider is a little bit more free mm -hmm. to get stuff out of the offlane. Ogre, a, uh, a support that can actually match the Jakiro's presence in lane is gonna be taken away. I have to say, it seems like there is a very high priority in being able to secure Roshan. That, that early first couple of Roshans, we've seen multiple Ten teams picking up remaining. not just one, but two different Rosh-taking heroes. Here we have Templar Assassin Five and the Bristleback. Remaining. Batrider's tough to play around inside the Roshan pit as well. Yeah. 
something Dying. Team Secret are currently lacking. But Team Secret still have a lot of good vision around Roshan, like Ice Path range is good, Sunstrike, Nyx Assassin getting close, have to commit Rocket a lot of vision plan. to that. And maybe Team Secret then try and find a big hit of themselves for their last one, which is able to also fight inside of Roshan. Ten seconds remaining. PL was the one which MP thought Secret were going to go for. So, so they remove that. I still think Slark's very strong. Yeah. I think Batrider struggles a lot versus Vision Heroes. Slark's one of those. And they also Reserve can't time. really deal the Silver Edge. Is also really good versus the Bristleback. And also his multiple damage edge and Spirit good versus the TA. So just liking likely a secondary support from NP. Although they could put the Batrider in a support position. I don't think they would. I don't think they're really forced to anyway. Like Batrider can even run top lane back in like Ion Brute, Bristle back into this dual off lane. Like, Team MP are definitely not restricted in any way, shape, or form for the way this draft rolls out. I like it, and the Conquer is just the icing on the cake for fantastic team fight and more positional play as well with that X marks spot. We saw that really being utilized yesterday. Ten seconds remaining. I like MP's team fight a lot more. They also have better synergy with the relocate with the X. So, Secret need to position one left for MP. He plays some weird one sometimes. Ooh. Okay. And straight up pushing and fighting hero for Team Secrets. It's a common pickup versus IO. You don't really want to fight in Eclipse. I think they needed this uh, five man sort of position one for them. But is their damage going to be able to match up against the presence of both Bristleback and Templar Assassin? Two heroes that can really get in her face. I don't think they can deal with Bristleback at all. I, I, I don't. It, it's fair that maybe they can cog him, but at best you're kiting him. And you're still gonna lose your clockwork, I think, in the fight. I'd have to give the favor to Team NP over here with the Wisp. I'm also gonna back Team NP. Toby, you're gonna it's give a it the full desk. Sweep? It's a unanimous test. Team NP just looks so much better in the laning phase, into the team fight, and into their push. If Team Secret win this, then they've outplayed NP. Oh, that's a bold prediction, Toby. What? <laughs> that's not a bold prediction. In fact, that's me sitting on both sides of the fence at the end of that. All right, very well. Do you think Team Secret cannot play Team NP? I believe they can, yeah. So if... You know what? Yeah, I will actually back Team Secret. I actually think NP is going to fall crumble. apart in their lanes. I knew you'd crumble. Uh, NP will fall <laughs> apart in their lanes, even though technically, by all accounts, they should win. Um, Team Secret may just get the better of them. All right. Philippines, I know you love the double Ds. We've got David and David for our opening match of the Manila Masters. Good morning, Manila. We love you, and we are ready for a match where no love is lost between these two teams, gods. We've got Puppy taking on his old comrades, Pylide Die and Envy. You gotta figure there's a little something spicy. The lobby was full of uh, interesting commentary between the players before the match. Enter game one. What are your thoughts? It's very fitting that this is, like, elimination at stake. One of these two teams... Bit of beef between them is going home in the first round in our first match on the live stage. It's the best way to start the event. It should be a hype one. So as the, the teams enter the field of battle, take a look at the draft. Uh, we heard it seemed like a, the panel leaning a bit towards secret. Do you agree with that assessment? Uh, a, for this game, and, and B, for the series as a whole? Yeah, it seemed like they largely liked what MP were doing with the draft, but I mean, there were some thoughts like Tobu was saying he felt like secret could likely outplay them. Uh, I think NP's draft, the Bristleback is going to be very hard to deal with this game. He's got the Io backing him up, so he's not really afraid of the Mana Burn. He can tank the Luna Ultimate if he goes into like a Hood type build, so... Very good game for Bristle to be effective. TA has a good matchup in the mid lane. I think NP's draft is actually looking overall like they should do well in the laning stage and potentially snowball from there. Yeah, you look at Secret, this lineup takes uh, quite a while to really come online with the Invoker pick, especially it is heavy on magic damage until later in the game. Uh, when the Exhort levels presumably pick up and the Luna gets some items. So a pipe could be a huge grab as the runes will spawn. Secret going for the aggressive invasion, at least for now. Looks like they are going to consider a full-on tri-lane here. It's MP will assume position, so Team yep. Secret on the offense. Yeah, one of the... I mean, so MP theoretically have strong lanes if they have the standard laning matchup, but because uh, the Bristle's not gonna get kind of contested in lane. This aggro trial lane can be very effective. This Luna Clockwork Jakiro can really cause problems for a melee hero. You can't really go into last hit when you might get caught by a Cogs, hit by the Luna. It's gonna be very tough for MB to actually have a good early game. Normally Bristleback is not contested all that heavily in the laning stage, and so like by the time you see him fight, he feels very tanky, but 
Early levels, he's really not. Only three base armor is okay. His HP is decent. He does have the IO to support him, but so you have those points in Bristleback, the points in Overcharge and Tether. He is a hero that can be dealt with. So interesting move by Secret. Going aggressive. The Mana Burn also going to prove a problem for him to a certain extent until Pile I Die gets some Regen items to help keep the Bristle topped off. Yeah. The level one Bristle is not all that scary until you start seeing points in the passive. It's interesting to see. What Kezu's going to get out of this bottom lane doesn't look like he should be able to get too much, but yeah, the harass at top, burning through that mana pool, the bristle. He's got mangoes, and he can also put the mango under the Io to get himself the extra regen, including as well as a clarity. But this is just a really rough start for Envy. Constant harass coming out to him as well as Pilot Eye. Yeah, now of course the quill spam proving a bit of a nuisance for MP. Going to force him back. Uh, let's take a look at our other lanes here. See how things are developing. Is Fada matched up against mid one early on, having a good time. And generally, we have seen that uh, the TA gets the upper hand in this matchup, at least early. Doing a good job at slowing mid one down, who's certainly known for his ability to dominate those 1v1s if yeah. he's left unchecked. But we're going to see a rotation now, it looks like, as Puppy sweeps around, trying to give a bit of help, and should be able to remove the refraction charges for Fada if he chooses to activate it. So it's going to... They're going to somewhat take away this full tri lane, give a little more space to the Bristle, and focus more on getting that Invoker a good start. Yeah, he just swoops in for one Jewel Breath, comes at a time where the TA could theoretically... Level 2 Refraction gets very difficult for the Invoker to get any farm. Invoker hasn't really got the, the points in the, the Ford Spirits just yet to really contest the last hits all too much, so... It does come at a pretty nice time to just guarantee Invoker gets some early CS, uh, and is going to limit what Fata can do as far as his early game snowball. Yeah, he'll still have that extra damage to try and secure last hits, but you can see just that quick rotation already. We're seeing mid one stabilize at 11 and 7 on the CS chart, so just a little bit of help from a friend, apparently. All he needs to get back in fighting shape, and our last lane for now is just the the two tempo controllers. Kezu playing the Nyx SS and MSS uh, on the Bat Rider. And yep. Great lane for Bat overall. Uh, he had some help at level 1. I think MSS maybe missed a bit of the last hits there because he isn't farming as well as he perhaps could have considering he had the dual lane to start with, but he's completely zoning this Nyx and it's very hard for Nyx to fight when he's got all these sticky charges on him. Yeah, and it's such a low mana cost spell that even with the, the mana burn, you're not really able to yeah. prevent him from using it fairly frequently. I like the, plan, the approach where he's like, let's just spam this mana burns to limit Batrider's kill potential. He has got double Mango, though, on MSS, so he can always, if he's going for a kill, just pop a Mango or two to give him that extra mana to use more Napalms, potentially get an early point in Flame Break to catch it by surprise. So we'll see if anything unravels there later on, but very likely going to be a quiet lane. It, it, it is kind of Mango Madness here. Feels only fitting in, in the Philippines, home of the best Mangoes in the world. So Nice to see the item <laughs> making a comeback. Yep. Very appropriate. A secret are going to make the first aggressive move of the game. Smoking around, wrapping towards Pile I Die and Envy. Probably gonna focus on that pesky little Io as Yapsor finds the opening, pops the battery assault, and the losing Beam helps secure them in position with the cogs there. Pi's able to tether out. Should be okay. Envy very tanky. He's gonna burn low, but won't quite be finished off. In fact, Envy turns it around, finds the first blood of the game. He almost gets MP too. He's gonna get angry at Puppy with the tether coming in from Pi. Puppy's former teammates want a bit of vengeance. Will Puppy get by? It's close, but it appears the chair prevails. Doesn't land the Sun Strike as well. That could have been the, the finishing blow. The timing of that smoke gank. Ooh, mid lane. Looking for the move now under the Invoker. NP is pushing up the tempo, but Kezu's there with the save. Good two here on Pal. Looks to turn things around. They do have the cold snap. Holding Fauna in place for the time being. Do they have the follow damage? One more auto attack with the mana burn. It's enough. What a rotation from Kezu. That. that is some heads up play and a very quick response from a hero you wouldn't expect to TP in at such a low level. You think nixie has got this lane where he can just get his experience, get his level six, but he makes sure he saves the invoke and then turns around. If not for that turnaround, if Secret went down 0 3, losing their off lane. Losing the offlane where they were aggro trialing as well as losing mid, that would have been a disaster for them. So Kezu kind of salvaging the laning stage there with that TP in. And Secret at least gets something early on. They were really starting to look to be in a tough spot. That Io having the second tether out to the creep wave just proved to be something that Secret weren't ready for. The timing needed to be when the tether was on cooldown. If he tethered the bristle, there's a small window where you go in, but because he still had it up, he was able to tether out of the cog strap. 
Uh, of course, the trade-off, though, is even though they get that kill in the mid lane, it's just free farm for the Batrider right now. MSS already 31 and 17 to the 7 and 1 of the Knicks. Granted, he was getting dual lane, so you don't expect him to do well, but that advantage even further amplified now is down in the river. AI2000 has been caught out by Yapsor, looking for the solo kill. He'll come up flush. He finds it. Definitely a needed kill for Secret, but God's overall looking at the CS of this game. They are getting pretty heavily dominated, yeah. so these kills are essential for Secret. Yeah, that's where I think this game could be quickly out of hand if not for kills like the that one there. The solo kill for a Clockwork means he's going to get his level 6 set a little bit faster. The kill in the mid lane means Invoker is having a slightly better time in what is a pretty bad matchup for him against TA. So small little things helping create a, a bit of an equilibrium here in this early game, although it is still NP favored with how much CS and farm they're getting in the lanes. And they could really fall behind if they lose control of the NP jungle, because NP have three heroes that are fantastic at clearing stacks. They've already begun to stack Ancients, the Bristol, the TA great at killing those off. The Batrider, of course, can oh, wow. farm the jungle yeah. decently as well. So with the IO, that's something that we used to see a lot of from the IO picks, is you like go to the jungle a bit earlier. Folk, you can kill off bigger stacks because you have the extra regen and uh, the overcharge to help keep your carries alive. So something Secret definitely have to be careful about. Yeah, definitely a dream game for farming efficiency when you, you bring that up as far as the stacks go. And we've got the master of e-efficiency in this one. So. Yeah, <laughs> and it's one of those things where getting ahead here in the game, in the new patch, it feels like you can take early objectives and then you've got full access to the entire farm on the map while your opponents don't. So theoretically, NP, if they're able to take down some early tier ones, could very quickly just take over the entire map, and they can farm it so incredibly effectively. So the game slows down a little bit now as we see Pi begin to rotate towards the mid lane, perhaps anticipating a rotation from Secret, which has in fact been mirrored as Yapsor assumes position in the trees. Both teams very worried about their mid lane getting ganked, possibly thinking about a go of their own. The trap is deployed mid. Looks like it's a bit off the mark to catch mid one. Just thought of trying to threaten, maybe force out those TP's rotations. It's now a fishing torrent. Also fails to connect, but just a lot of action around this mid lane. Seems like trying to shut down the tier of the Invoker is a higher priority right now for both teams. Yeah. See Kezu hit his level 6 fairly soon on the Nyx Assassin. That could spark some aggression from Team Secret. Fortunately, he didn't quite get it from that last creep wave, but he will get it from the Bounty Room, which means we may see that first move from him. If he can catch someone like an Io or a Kunkka, these supports are pretty underfarmed and pretty squishy right now. Oh, Owie with the aggressive move into the mid lane, even showing the Io that was up on the cliff, and this will prompt the rotation that you mentioned with that Nyx Assassin rotating in. Batrider, I believe, does have a TP as well. There, we yeah. could very quickly see seven, eight heroes descend on this mid lane. Perfect timing. The Dire team put the sentry right as the Nyx was about to swoop in invis. I imagine the call came from the top lane. Envy's like, this Nyx has gone missing. You open up the scoreboard, and you see he's level six. Well, and... they saw it, but it doesn't matter. He goes yep. splat anyway. Great pickup by Kezu will scurry away to the north. The cockroach proving too elusive for now. They protected the push. They did not protect their retreat. And Kezu found the opening to get in. He's been definitely the the star of this early game for Secret. That rotation mid now finding another pickoff for his team. Him and Yapsor have both been very good and effective on the rotations. Yeah, Secret playing a little stack Dota of their own here. And that is something to mention about the Luna. Still a fantastic hero for turbo farming later on in the game. So for both teams, really, it could be turned into a very economy-heavy mid-game. But uh, for now, still waiting for that first big Batrider rotation. I imagine we've got Pylai Dai closing in on uh, level 6 on the IO sometime in the next couple minutes. So. Not too close, but level the 10-minute mark means the tombs come up. So that'll most... I guess Kunk is both... Kunk and I are both very good with their level 6s. Clockwork's level 6, another big important one. Yapsor will be definitely the recipient of their tomb, so... They're gonna shove in this bottom lane now, committing the Firefly and a turret on the Creep Wave. Looks like they might want to rotate. Yeah, the, the Batriders build, the Arcane Boots, very good against in the matchup against Nyx Assassin to give you a mana pull to always use your spells. And the mana burn doesn't do extra damage. The downside is, it slows down the drums, it slows down the Blink Dagger, so... MSS, it feels like, is going to be playing like a, at a bit of a slower pace with his item timings than he normally would be. Yeah, Mono Boots also have extra value when you have the IO on your team as well. Absolutely. So perhaps a consideration here for Mojo Stormstout as Puppy will take over the mid lane, also needing to do a little catch up. Jakiro, not particularly farm dependent normally, but is fairly level dependent as a support. All of his spells scale quite well, so getting a little me time there. We are going to see NP make a movement on this bottom lane as. 
three, maybe four heroes to send there. Yeah, it looks like under cover of smoke. Sana is creeping in. They might find MP momentarily. Has the Eclipse, but there's a few too many heroes here with Refraction to tank it as well. He's just going to have to accept his fate. Down he goes. MP looking now to take over some jungle creeps, and it'll be Fada back to the mid lane, so they're not going to try to push too hard off of this. Great first move. It's a four-man rotation. They leave Envy farming, and the, the beauty of this Bristleback hero is that he's not afraid too much of being ganked. He's very tinky with this early Vanguard. So sending, if you want to go kill Envy, you've got to bring like three or four heroes yourself. So at that point, MP can take a kill, potentially press the tower while leaving Envy alone with four points in the passive, the Vanguard, the treads, very hard to bring down. Still leaving Pi in the bottom lane, but like you said, Envy freed up and just on his own, the TA also farming freely in the mid lane. So Envy right now definitely feeling more confident in their movements around the map. That is the downside to the Invoker and the Lunapix gods. These are fairly gankable, fairly squishy cores that don't have a lot of mobility at this stage of the game. Later, Invoker gets pretty hard to gank, but yep. uh, still very vulnerable. Bristleback, that's not the case. Even, even TA, a lot more survivable. Ideal scenario for them is they want to be going for pickoffs, using the Nyx, the Clockwork, and the Sunstrike synergy. Invoker just wants to be sitting kind of in a fairly passive, safe place, farming away, throwing Sunstrikes around for kills. But he needs his kind of ganking supports and offlaner to actually make that happen. And right now, because of NP being grouped up, it's not all that easy. A decent flame break here by MSS, but not quite the ideal angle. And it would be a long dive with a potential rotation from the Luna to worry about. NP decide not to overcommit. So they'll back off. Just content to continue their farming rotations as their cores decently ahead, even with the Midas, the Invoker. Still slightly behind the Templar Assassin, but a very different pace from the Bristleback game that we saw yesterday for NP Gods. They don't really, there's not a huge sense of urgency. They have the TA that scales much better late game uh, and maybe more of like a, a map control lineup here. And they seem content to just trade farm with Secret. Yeah, they probably feel like their strongest timings are going to come a bit later. This Blink TA is a very useful line to have because that's going to find them an easy kill. Elsewhere, action breaking out as the boat gets deployed, but it's Fada now on the chase with Pilot Day there for assistance. They're looking for the third kill of this fight. Fada blinks in, charges forward, MSS there as well, and NP begin to surge ahead now, make it 6-4 to four the score, but more importantly, towers are dropping, NP applying pressure top. In the meanwhile, not a whole lot MP can do counter it. That's great use of the relocate. The TA gets a kill mid, and then the IO is immediately after that, relocating in bottom to assist somewhere else in the map for other kills. So, really nicely played, and NP... Not just getting the kills, but getting the objectives to go with it. They take the bottom tier one. Envy's been just chipping away at this top tower, so that's going to be a pretty easy take for them if they want to commit a few more heroes for it. And Secret have to be concerned about what their moves are going to be, where Nyx can find some openings, where the Clockwork can start getting involved with the hook shot. Now, Envy's still entirely uncontested here. Kazu is going to find it, but it really feels like it's going to require at least three heroes. Maybe with the Sun Strike, they have a chance with two. But now, make four. it three, and then the Sunstrike coming in as well. Good impale to start things off. They won Envy Chan. Will they get him? Eclipse even committed, and it's enough to bring him down. I think smart call by Secret not to try to be greedy and save an ult there. Just yeah. ensure you get that bristle kill before the IO comes in and tries to turn it around. The Eclipse, unneeded, bit over the top, but like you say, it's you, it's such a big kill for them. It's so important they get it. You never know if Bristle is going to like pop all his stick charges and suddenly miraculously survive with an IO relocate in. You make sure you get that kill. No messing around and Secret will get the tower to go with it. And immediately look to go and defend their other towers on the map. Oh, mid one, going to find Pylai die out of position in the mid lane. Just gets chunked down by raw auto attack damage. Now well on his way to an Agadim Scepter. He has just this moment eclipsed the Templar Assassin most farmed here in the game. And we have seen mid one can completely take over on Invoker. As far as like dealing with an Invoker, they have the Batrider to jump him, but there's not really a whole lot else for NP that's great at keeping him in control in these team fights. Yeah, in TA once he hit the Desso timing's pretty good. Invoker does not match up well against like burst physical damage. Uh, here is like Terra Blade TA can very quickly burst him down, uh, and a TA with a blink like Meld Strike with a Desso will take away Invoker's HP in like two seconds or so, but. You've got to get to a point where TA has like a BKB to go with the Desso if you're going to be blinking into all the Disables, Lockdown, the Eclipse, the, the, the magic damage team fight for Secret is very formidable. Well, this play, an interesting one. NP straight into the Roche Pit. They have lots of minus armor, but Yapsor 
Could play the hero. He already threw out the rocket earlier. Potentially goes in with the hook shot. Sun strike there. He's just a second late as he will hook in, but Aegis already claimed. Fada, the one to grab it. Pile I die will take the free kill to the bank. And now NP surging forward. Gonna start looking at some outer towers here, guys, as they look to limit the map control for Secret and bottle them up. And if Secret lose those towers, I I'm quite worried for them. They don't really have the most the best split pushing lineup. There's no like Ember Spear this game. There's no illusion here, like a power blade who can reliably and safely just farm the enemy jungle. So if they lose the towers, they might just get bottled up entirely. I totally agree with you. I'm just it's very hard because there isn't a great option to actually defend them. Defending into this Aegis and not to mention the fact that you're going to get jumped. Like, you try to go near a tower defend it, Blink Lasso is going to find you. Batrider will use tree lines, will use fog, will use a smoke, and find the lasso to kind of catch any hero like a Jakiro who's trying to spam out the lane or an Invoker. You've got to be very Setting cautious. up up top now as they make the move onto the Luna. They're going to isolate MP, and that is what happens if you go and farm yeah. on your own. It's perhaps a risk he'll have to take this game, but he is punished in this situation. And to, to add on to your point, as we will see a little skirmish Essentially breaking out here in the Roche Pit. Kazu walks in, does not find the hero he wants to take down oh. 1v1. They were looking for the Io, but he got X back after the relocate. That's a really, really cute little play from NP. Your Io is about to relocate back into like the enemy team after saving someone. You X him, and then you just bring him right back. Just ping pong him around the map, and NP. Reminds me of like those old speed gaming days where you'd see the crazy like blink dagger gaming with the clinks and. They'd have things like yeah. X and relocate to constantly play super aggressive, but having an insurance policy, uh, a life vest, so to speak. Well, Throwback Dota, even in a, a very new era. Yeah, concerns for Secret definitely surmounting here as they're going to lose a lot of map control. They're losing, and they have lost all their tier 1s. They're going to start losing these tier 2s, likely with the Aegis. Bata has his Destro now. He didn't even have that for some of those earlier pushes and fights, and this is where TA really... Uh, hits her, her first big peak. Having Blink plus Deso is very hard to, to fight into. Oh, Kazu sees an opening here as he walks right into Pilot Die, but MSS in the neighborhood. His job is really to catch the IO. Kazu has to always be gunning for, trying to sneak his way into the back lines, avoiding sentries, find the IO, get that Vendetta Impale into a Sunstrike, and take out the IO from the fights. If you can't catch the IO, you can't defend. You can't fight into the front. You can't fight into TA or Bristle. These series are way too tanky. You've got to catch IO. Batrider's like an okay target to go on as well, since it takes away the NP initiation, but IO is really probably the, the ideal one. Oh, Puppy trying to slow things down here with the macro pyre bottom, but Bristle still gets out of the tower. Is going to start whacking away at it with the benefit of Warpath. And now Fada descends, so that tier 2 bottom slated to fall. No signs of contest. He's got not only the Aegis, but Additionally, a Desolator already picked up. Hyper Farm TA. Oh, they're making a sneaky little move too. They're sending the Batrider smoked up towards top, ready to catch any split pushing heroes, while the IO is bottom, ready to relocate a TA or a Bristle up there for kills. Secret, though, seem wary of this. Even though two carries were showing bottom, they're not split pushing. And this is, I mean, it's good they don't get caught out, but it's bad because you really want to be split pushing when your opponents aren't. I, 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 I'm taking all control of the map, taking all the objectives, you have to respond somewhere. Secret, their plan is to go for a big smoke though. They want to fight knowing that maybe the bat or the kunker isn't here. Yeah, you really want to gank into the IO so that the relocate won't be the counterplay. But a ward is going to scout out Puppy. They can disengage NP and potentially TP mid if they actually want to take the fight. They're going to hook onto Envy. That is a tough target to take down. Can they do it? Now popping the Eclipse for whatever it's worth, but Fado stands his ground, dueling into MP, winning the duel for now as he chucks him low. The Aegis is going to pop up a second life to work with an Envy now on the case. There's the lasso. Rotation comes in from the bat. Still the IO staying alive throughout the fight. The boat on top as well, chewing their way through Secret. Almost certain to fall. Three are down. The Luna did make it out to safety, but a heavy price to pay for Secret as NP start to go Super Saiyan. Yeah, strutting down the bottom lane, maybe even going to get some early chip damage. They forced out a mid one buyback this early on an evoker, really going to hurt his economy. They'll try now again as they move on to the bristleback, but Tether is there. Pylai died to the rescue potentially, but the cogs are going to interrupt him. Envy though kept alive by the Tether. The meatball is turned back on that pesky ball of light, but Envy going to stand his ground, survives for now. And MSS on the chase, charging forward as Fada. Good damage there from the TA, but now no more Aegis, needs to be careful. Tries to back away, they will corral the Bat, try to clip his wings, and they bring Batman down to Earth. They get the kill on him as well as the IO, but is it worth an Invoker buyback?
Yeah, pretty expensive. I mean, they immediately bought back. NP perhaps didn't have to fully commit to go high ground once the invocable back, but giving up those kills at least gives Secret something to work with. I like the, the initial idea from Secret when they smoked out was definitely the correct one. They read the situation well. They understood that the Batrider and the Kunker were actually smoking towards top. Maybe they didn't know for sure, but that was the call. Like, hey, these guys, they're looking for pickoffs on a split pushing. Let's five-man smoke into these three heroes where the IO is. Like you say, smoke into the IO, fight where there's going to be less numbers and there's no backup coming in. Problem is, it just took them too long to initiate and to actually find those picks. And it was a bristle they end up finding. Very, very tanky. They couldn't bring him down, so... Secrets still find themselves in a tough position. They're not fighting into an Aegis now, so there is openings to go for smoke moves, but try and find some catches using perhaps the Clockwork Initiation or the Nyx, but still very, very difficult. And that is where Secret are going to be strongest this game, Gods, is defending high ground. They have yes. fantastic deep push, lots of control, those congested tight areas. will feel claustrophobic for NP if they don't have an early pick. Going up the hill into the Cogs, the Invoker Wombo combo, even Jakiro, fantastic in those scenarios. So, so I think if you look at NP, they want to just keep the farm up, not get caught by a smoke, and then when they do go high ground, it's with a pick, whether it's from the Kunkka or the Batrider, use that global mobility uh, and pick off potential to open up a base push. Five man smoke, not gonna find anything as MP play defensively. A wild hook shot from Yapster, I'm not sure. I think he meant to rocket flare because he just hooked in like the middle of nowhere. But either way, MP seemed ready for it. They immediately played back, went defensive, and they smoked up. They're smoking behind this TA. This is dangerous for Secret. They see the TA farming alone, but what they don't know is that there's four other heroes right behind him smoking up. Oh, they appear to be wondering taking that bait. It's gotta be in the trees. Such a trap for them to go on him, unless they can somehow burst him down before he BKBs. You say that, but now they are a little split here, and Pilot Die is one of the heroes' top, so if yeah. they get jumped top, Secret would have the power play. Fortunately for them, MP are playing it safe. They're gonna back away, and still, while they fence back and forth around the map, they're keeping their farm up here. You can see still MP well ahead when it comes to core farm, especially after the Invoker buyback. So it's not just like they're dodging fights uh, and avoiding Secret's pressure they're still finding me time in the midst of it all. So maintain this full man pressure at the top lane. Oh, Kezu might walk right into a dire scan here. Moving undercover, Mendetta. Fauna was ready. They immediately plant down the sentry. They are prepared for any sort of secret aggression onto the high ground. I, I don't think secret when it go to the high ground. They want to fight around these two observer wards they've got. They've stacked all their vision at this top area, and that's why they're staying up here for a long time. They're really hoping that NP makes a move and that Secret can then use this vision to their advantage. They've got Observer Wards with sentries. They'll see anything really coming their way. Problem is they don't maybe know that NP have an Observer Ward themselves. He playing patient and a very yeah. kind of different overall approach from what we saw yesterday. For the most part, MP was a little more up-tempo, not necessarily on a clock, but just felt like an urgency. This game is more what I used to see a lot of with the old Cloud9. Uh, is much more patient, happy to farm, take it late, map control Dota. We'll have to see if Secret can crack this disciplined veneer that MP are showing. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like they're waiting, like you say, they're going to be strongest defending high ground. They hoping that MP perhaps go for that again, but it's not the case. MP, even with the BKB purchase on TA, Happy to farm, happy to slow it down, happy to wait for the next Roshan more than anything it feels like, and it doesn't really feel like Secret can make moves while NP are uh, playing defensively. It's T who have overall the, the stronger lineup right now. Five minutes in, NP leading by almost 8,000 gold. 237 CS on the TA, that is absurd. Is, he's been beast mode this whole tournament, really. The puck play yesterday was quite immaculate, even in defeat. He had a huge role in their success, and Dyer's feels like that break he took is, is serving the young lad well. Rejuvenated and feisty. Stands, yeah, Fata's definitely been a standout point for this NP lineup. Uh -oh. Kezu rotating in again. He knows there's no Dyer sentry top of him right now since he's by his own sentry, but... I like what Pilai Dai does, just gets the spirits up. He, it's kind of like a, a radar detector. If one of those hits the licks, as it may do in a second, he might know it's coming. Oh, but it also is a setup yeah. for Kezu at the same time. He says, great, nice early That's warning actually... detection system. I have characters. Yeah, it's true. Kezu, maybe, maybe not the best warning system. 
<laughs> Kezu says, yeah, you want to do that? Well, thanks for the free carapace. Not going to miss this impale. Oh, that's what you don't, don't jinx it. That's what Secret need to do to, to get back in this game. Keep finding these pickoffs while MP and mid one farm. Get your two cores, transition to the late game, have Nyx clockwork, try and find pickoffs. Even if they, they just kill supports, they just need to buy time uh, to create space, get the Invoker into the late game stage, get the Luna there as well. Luna's gone to this Mask of Banner, so it's a very efficient farming item, but the bigger problem is just finding places where it's safe to farm, and that's the, the Nyx and Clockwork's job. Yeah, we did also see the the talent into an extra forward spirit for mid one. So perhaps Seeker gonna try to play more of that split push game as as we drag on here. They have gone for yeah. double Midas already, the Nyx as well as the Voker. So, so they're trying to play the economy game too. Do you do you favor either team like going later, assuming there's no high ground or huge climactic team fight? Both lineups go reasonably well. I um, maybe slightly prefer NPs in the late game. With that said, like I think Secret's best plan right now is to go late game. They can't fight, they're under farm. The later this game goes, that they're gonna basically close up that farm gap, which is their idea. So they give themselves a better shot in the late game, but I still do favor NP. The the TA, the bristle with the uh, the bat rider as a catch in the late game is one of like the, the best heroes to have in the three position role. It can be very difficult for Nyx to initiate once there's like gems in play. So I feel like Bat Rider's gonna have a much easier time than a, a Nyx assassin this game. Dan will detect an NP incursion around the Roche pit. Unfortunately, the map control, not really the best for Secret. They do have that tier two top and mid, but no yeah. real vision around the pit. And NP just did this throw so damn fast. There was there will rocket, be no consent. Yeah, I think rocket players going in, but end of the day, you see it happening, you know it's going down. You don't want to go fight into this lineup of NP right now. They're just too strong. They have, like you say, the vision advantage around the area. TA traps very effective in scouting out any movement towards the pit and secret. Just use that time and space to push out some of these other lanes. Maybe take a T1 bottom. Not a big objective by any means, but at least it's some gold for their coffers to work with. Well, the NP coffers certainly overflowing nicely as they start to march down mid. NV now completing a BKB and a cheese. It's been a very safe, standard bristleback build. So much magic damage for secret. At this point, still quite reliant on it, so. MP with an IO potentially tethered to him all BKB and he's just not gonna die. Especially he's also got Coco Rum to work with. He is a very he'll shake it off. There's no relocate. Pi just relocated top to push out a wave, which was an interesting choice. Does prevent the invoker's split push threat to your high ground, but does mean you now do not have the relocate save for the high ground push. And they may want to actually wait for that before they fully try and commit to the high ground play. It it's does fairly low cooldown. So. Yeah, it's not not the end of the world, just means, yeah, they're going to split up, farm a bit more, spread some more traps, push out the, a bottom lane or two. Blood, Bloodthorn now on the menu for Fada. Attack. This is key. absolutely enormous. Mid one can't actually really go to the top lane to split push without the boots of travel. Uh, and he could walk up there with a TP scroll, but ideally when you have boots of travel, they have a much shorter cooldown than the TP scrolls. So until he gets that, the split push threat isn't really that formidable from secret. And when they try to push, you, you can hardly call it a split with five heroes having to move out just to break the boundary of that tier two top. And he certainly has secrets bottled up for now. They are so fence towards the high ground there. They're trying to do MP to start things off from Fada. He will be x for safety. He was thinking about actually going onto the high ground though. Do it again! Kind of that old school style that we were seeing from E-Home when they brought Kunkka back in the meta where you just siege with the X, you can always pull him back to safety. On top of that, you have to relocate save. It's, it should be safe damage though. I say that, Fada did lose almost two thirds of his health Yeah, there. he didn't do much damage to the tower. He went, well, he hit the invoker rather than the tower. We'll go back in again, bottom lane. I think he's realized, like, yeah, objectives is a much better thing than the kills. I, I'm having flashbacks in speed gaming hard, right? Yeah. That's with the way they're approaching the siege. And be very patient. Not doing a whole lot of structural damage, but hey, there's there's no tree in this game, so it is all permanent for now. The counterplay for this is getting a Yule Scepter to stop the X pullback, but farming one is not the easiest. Nyx has now cube one up. Uh, he had something... He had the Ring of Health, though. I think he was initially going to go for, like, a Lotus Orb. There's the hook to start things off. Yeah, I'm sort of now getting aggressive, but a nice four staff is going to keep AOI 2000 alive simultaneously. Looking to isolate the TA, focus her down, but she's got an agent. She's coming back for round two. They still stay on top of her corpse. 
Secret thinking about an additional fight. Bot is going to BKB. Now the Ghost Scepter from Yapsor as he sounds the retreat. So far, so good for Secret. They force out a BKB. They will crack through that Aegis. And NP have to back away. Yeah. It's a great hold, and it was a hold not by defending Hygram, but just making an aggressive play. The call there to just jump the TA, break the Aegis, and then back off was perfect from Secret. And he still wants to go. So just Secret there, posturing aggressively with a level 2 Eclipse ready to, for a team fight, but it's not going to be effective against the Bristle, who is Cheese and BKB. That is not the hero you want to go on. No, that's a hero you just want to ignore. Put him in the cogs and run yeah. away. You tell, yeah, Yapster, like, just hogs, push him around, keep him busy, but, yeah, we, you do not think we can go into Bristol by any means. So finally, Secret will manage to purchase a gem here. Okay. Looking to re-establish some map control yeah, down TA, on towers. The TA traps and observer wards. Like, when your opponents are in this position where they're sieging, you want to have a gem just to take away all their vision. So anytime you do move out of your base, you, you don't want your opponents to know, because that's where they find the instant pickoff. Oh, MP has been spotted there by a void. Out pretty far. Doesn't have any good defensive items as of yet. So if he's caught, he's going to be going down. Now I'm building back into the bad side. There's the hook to start things off. It's on to Yapsor with the initiation. Is going to find that bat rider. Brings MSS down nice and early. Doesn't look like he has the buyback available. So they're fighting with a power play here. Secret. The B man advantage. They also have an Eclipse ready. MP trying to wait for an opening. It's not Envy he wants to use that Eclipse on though. Mid one coming in from the side. Now gonna ghost walk away. Very patiently, Secret are just nibbling at NP from all directions, but Fata says, screw that man. I'm going in, baby. He's gonna BKP, dodging away from the next stun, but doesn't have the vision he needs to secure a kill. Now MP sounding the retreat. He does get clipped though by his the in his backpack. And they're gonna oh, pull no. him in with the BKP. No way, I'll probably dies anyway. MP in all kinds of trouble. Now mid one gets jumped on. Envy's mad. He dishes out the damage. And he slaughters those cores. Yeah, it, it, the initial plays from Secret where they're just chipping, finding these pickles was great, but then they fully committed to a team fight. And that is, they just don't have the yeah. functioning power. They cannot stand against NP with BKBs up. Still, the cheese is ready on NP if he needs it. I mean, the TA finding the kill on the Jakira isn't a problem. It's the fact they fight after that. Once the TA commits BKB, kills your Jakira, if you stay on your high ground, that's a win for Secret, forcing out another BKB second from that TA. It's definitely a, a good thing to see happen in this late game stage, but... And, and you can see Secret uh, are going to have to do with NP, never looking to leave their side of the map. As NP's going to get caught out here, he does have to cheese up. Round two coming in with Fata on the move, has the haste turn ready, goes for the mill, just trying to find his opening here, but they have managed to slay the beast. NP down and out, Fata in trouble too. Ice pass there, good connection by Kezu. Is the rescue coming in from the IO? Tries for a Pylai die, unable to save his friend. Fata's gonna BKB, turns on to Kezu, but he drops too fast. Secret print him down, they turn the corner. Find the double core connection and the IO to boot. It's three for them as they come roaring back into this game. Yet to lose a lane of Rax, and we're starting to hit that point where mid one is going to be closing in on his level 25. The Invoker will prove oh, more yeah. of a nuisance as the game drags on. One playing a hell of an Invoker right now. He's been in 12 of the 13 kills, which is like, I mean, it's great performance from him. It's not what you necessarily want to see because it means they're not killing anyone without the Invoker, which means like Nick's Clockwork have been very reliant on him. But ultimately, yeah, mid one's performance has kept Secret in this game. Kezu keeps finding some great pickoffs as well, and looking more and more on the up for, for Team Secret. And Pylite died did not have the relocate available yeah. in that last fight, so... Chris to save his buddy. We haven't seen, like, too many great saves from NP. It used to be something Pylite died was, like, known as a huge specialist for. I remember that he hit that one game versus a Bat Rider where, like, every time the Bat lassoed, he already had relocate queued up, was able to instantly cancel it, save a teammate. Uh, with X as well, you would you'd think they'd be able to find more saves, but so far, pretty and pickings for NP not to burn. Secret done a really good job initiating on targets when they maybe had vision of the IO elsewhere or just killed them fast enough that they, the response from Pi just hasn't been able to clear and see what NP look to do as a result. They are smoking up, looking to clear out this top jungle. We're at that point where smokes are kind of a precious commodity though. Both teams feel like this is the time to take a fight and use them. And this allows Secret the freedom to move out of their base at long last. They will poke their heads in the river. Not quite ready to cross it just yet, but as we close in on the double rune spawn, it's really important not to lose that map control. Something NP were looking to just maintain. They have the X to always send people back and still keep them 
on the secret side of the map. So you could see like the fear for secret is they don't win those fights and NP's always there controlling the map, stealing their neutrals, taking yep. the tour rune spawn, but that ha that situation has not fully arisen yet, especially with that lost team fight for NP. Get done here though. Likely just look for some de-warding. Yapsor has the gem but does not see the ward on the cliff by him. He's saying you want to check out with a, a rocket player or some kind of scouting, but case just yet. So, timings here, guys, for entering the late game. Anything in particular for either team? Items, levels, uh, uh, talents to unlock? Is there anything? 25 is insane. Plus three refraction instances is going to be one of the biggest ones that we'll see this game. Uh, but I think, I mean, most of the time it will come around Roshan. That's what people so far have been NP getting in. NP has that BKB, did not want to activate it. They could kind of force it out, but good patience there. Yeah. Tether in comes from high. Able to give him back a decent shot for the mana. You can see it. It is annoying against the Evoker, and if they waste those BKB charts so they don't win fights off them later in the game, they're just going to be TA and Bristle go from dominating the, the Invoker to just being controlled all fight and having their BKBs constantly forced out prematurely. Bristle gets a lot scarier now. His level 20 talent gives him 50 attack speed, which is a huge amount. So his talent's going to help really boost him up more, much more as a late game carry at this point. I mentioned the TA25, that one's coming soon. So uh, let's, I look at NP still. They've got a few more timings to come. The inability to take a Rax is not a concern for them just yet. But I feel like they really need to with the third Roshan because, as said, the more the time goes on, the, the smaller this farm discrepancy is between the two teams. 8,000, 9,000 gold difference at 25 minutes is a much bigger deal than the 9,000 gold difference at 37 minutes. Typically speaking, it is a smaller percentage increase. Still, secret hanging on in this game one. It looked at points like it might all unravel, but they stabilize. They start to leave their side of the map a bit more. Still struggling to get much up as far as vision goes gods i suppose that is one thing to mention that np generally speaking have had the ward advantage for most of this game and when you've got a bat rider an io even to some extent the kunkka giving you a lot of mobility for the team around the map you really want that vision that advantage in the vision game so they haven't been able to convert it into kills very often over the last 10 15 yeah, minutes mp have had complete map control complete vision but it does feel like they haven't like you say been able to use it all too effectively they've been able to secure roches uh, and take all the outer towers, or they haven't even taken the tier 2 top, which is a bit surprising, but that's because they were prioritizing using that second Roche to go high ground with the Aegis Cheese, but unable to do so. Third Roshan, see if this one's the charm, as TA is going to hit that level 25 very soon. If you want to wait for the 40 minute mark, you get a tome, but more likely they just farm up some ancients, kill Roshan, and TA will be very close to hitting that 25. Secret intent to give this one away. NV will claim the Aegis here. Bada quite slot limited at this point. Be grabbing the double damage rune. It's like a truck, but nothing to crash into just yet. Just grab the Lincoln Sphere. Getting closer and closer to being topped out as the yeah, I mean certainly some item swaps and still uh, the moon shards you can purchase and stuff in the backpack, but not gonna get a whole lot stronger from this point forward. No. Is kind of nearing that peak. I like that he's kept the the bottle in his backpack. You find a DD rune, 40 minute mark reaches. You get the double power runes. There's a lot, a much higher chance of finding those DDs. Worth keeping the bottle now. We used to see mids just like sell them, and once you get kind of six slotted, no longer the case. And only fitting to be on Envy's team all day. <laughs> Envy, the the man who kind of brought like the carry keeping a late game bottle back yep. into the meta, or into the meta in the first place. <laughs> Like what mid one's done, picked up a plate mail, is gonna go into the Shiva's Guard for his invoker, needs just to be able to survive against that first physical damage as much as possible. Similarly, Luna's gone back for a hurricane hike, just giving the mobility as a solution to that aggression from like a TA or a bristle. That's a really nice pickup versus those heroes. You just you don't want to be close as a Luna, even as the invoker, uh, just having that extra ability to disengage, wait out the BKBs. So that is the ideal scenario if you're if MP go back for that X marks the spot sieging that we saw a little bit earlier. But I think that Yules is up by now, right? No, he, oh, he, he went back for going, Lotus. Yeah, he changed his mind, went for the Lotus, decided... I mean, they only did that X siege once, so... Has proven not to be an item they desperately need. If it was like a constant split push for like 15, 20 minutes straight, then yeah, they'd probably be like, gotta get a Yules, but... Because but it hasn't recurred. Other big item here is that AC. So, MP getting yeah. better at killing structures. If they hit them... But they seem quite tentative in their efforts to walk up towards the building. They do have relocate ready. 
They got the full complement of defensive abilities with the X also online, even the boat available. But still not ready to go onto the high ground, at least not fully. It's spotted in the bottom lane chipping, so actually he's getting good structural damages and, and doing so without a big commitment. Envy unable to do much mid, but now it's his turn to go whack the tower. And for Secret, the question becomes, when do you fight? And how do you go in? Kylai died and AUI sitting very far back. Yeah, last time the way they made it happen was by initiating on the bat right bursting him down. If they can find a way to cleanly jump MSS, it'd be great, but he's well hidden in the trees. But uh, he's gonna take the axe and not do anything with it. Epi being quite patient in the siege, still about two minutes to go on the ages. Yeah. I think Bata is like, come on guys, you guys need to be mid so I can blink in bottom without there being five heroes here. So he goes back mid and pushes himself. He got the damage done bottom when there was, what, three heroes mid? Punka was bottom with him, he exes him, hits the tower. Bata seems very clear in his mind that he doesn't want to be just five manning down a lane. You can't really get onto the high ground with all the spam coming out from Secret. The Cogs is gonna... The Cogs is the most annoying thing. You just put the Cogs on the high ground and, like, pseudo melee heroes like TA and, well, Bristol actually a melee hero, really just can't go walking into that. The mana burn from the Tornado EMP is the other really annoying thing right now, so... It's, it's where you'd love to have a, a Terror Blade or a Drow as your, your main tower hitter, but that's something NP have to work with this game. That's what finds the DD. He doesn't actually bottle it, which... He forgot about his bottle there, or just hasn't actually been planning to bottle those runes, but... Gonna activate it right away. One shot's a creep wave. <laughs> like, okay. But yeah, you want to go hit, hit some buildings with that DD. Get in there as soon as possible at bottom. Even just... We're kind of reaching that point where uh, MP maybe just want to consider like a TA BKB hitting these buildings. Hasn't got the Aegis and Cheese, which makes it a little bit tough, but MP's going to do it instead. Got to be careful about it though, as it will disable the potential relocate play. MP will take quite a bit of spam here. The EMP zones in the back. You can see Jakiro and Invoker combining to keep NB under control, at least for now. Aegis, so it's about a minute to go, and it looks like he just wants it to pop at this point. No, Chase is mine going to back away. Finally died there with the heal. They finally managed to bring a tower down at 42 minutes. A true chess match between Secret and NP. Still a first lane of Rax. Proving elusive as Fada tries to move in, but his link is turned out broken. He'll have to jump back to safety. Rax again, and now the third forward. Watch that melee Rax with the commitment might come down from Secret. Nice pet there. Back row Pyre 2. BKB and muscle your way through is the call from NP. The Aegis only 27 seconds to go. If this is a long chase, he might lose the Aegis. Yeah. Mid retreat, but Secret don't want to overcommit. Yeah, Secret's totally okay with this right now. I mean, they're still in the tough spot. They're still behind, falling further behind because they're not getting farmed. But the act of losing a melee Rax at this stage is not a big deal. The bigger deal is just the fact you're falling further and further behind. That 9k gold lead has now turned into a 16,000 one. So NP are progressing much better into the late game with their items than Secret are. And Secret need to find a way to get this Luna more items, to get like the Nyx Assassin, like the Aghanim Scepter. It's more, mostly it's just the Luna who really needs to be a big late game threat. Invoker well, feels a bit underfarmed as well. And you rewind the tape to, I mean, what was it like 20 something minutes when Luna was off on her own top, trying to farm, gets relocate gang to punish. And that's just the limitation of Luna as a hero. She doesn't have that same level of split push uh, and elusiveness that you need. So it's, there's just not really a whole lot MP can do it feels like on his own. Yeah, that's the strength of this draft when you've got great catch from a hero like Batrider paired with a relocate is that no one can go out on their lo uh, lonesome self to really farm or push out the lane. Invoker pseudo can because he can just leave. He can only show his sword spirits, he can use his spells from fog, but even that is dangerous. The tornado gonna lock Fada in place but gets pulled back as the engagement on the high ground oh, nice commences. Disarm. Envy with the BKB. We're gonna have to run away, but this is gonna allow Fonda to come back in for a little bit of extra chip damage. Pulled back to safety once again. AUI playing this card as well, and NP still doing good structural damage. Yep, not losing heroes, not losing map control, maintaining ward superiority, maintaining farm advantage. They're basically checking all the boxes here as they try to close out Secret in game one. Very disciplined from NP. Very. Disciplined and NP are not really two words I expected to use in the same sentence. Yeah. They, they used to be known as Cloud9 for a reason, right? But this is, is feeling like a, a very different and more it's, calm approach. It's the presence of Bata, I think, in a lot of ways. This is what like he used to bring to the table, like with the old Liquid when he was on the team. Even the old I mean the old Cloud9, he was like the one responsible player on the team, you know. He he tried to rein in the aggression, but we'll see what the play is going to be here for Secret. At some point, they've just got to make a jump, make a move, play using them, use their buybacks to take a bold 
fight. Perhaps even consider contesting that next Roshan because making it's becoming more and more difficult to go late game as you give up Roche after Roche, farm after farm with no map control whatsoever. The yeah, end progression just is not there. Envy with the full heart of Terrest now. <laughs> getting Aye. extremely tanky. It gets the lineup that... I mean, it's not all magic damage, but still, you don't have, like, a true, like, DPS item here on MP. It kind of utility items, the Mask of Madness, the Manta, the Hurricane Pike. Still no Butterfly, no MKB, no crit of any kind, as the fight might break out momentarily. Envy surging in on the Warpath, perhaps, but doesn't quite get a glimpse of Secret. The trap will get laid down, and MP, it seems clear, are going to set a course for this Tier 2 top. Knowing that the bottom lane will always shove in their favor unless Secret are there. If you push it, start to congregate. Secret, they were hoping that some kind of pickoff might present itself, some way to initiate in. Again, I think we're kind of gone past the point where the IO is the main target and we're back to the, like, the bat or the TA. You need to be able to jump one of these. The TA is risky because she's got nine refraction charges with a BKB and a Lincoln. Batrider does not have, only has a BKB to protect himself, so he's like the dream target to jump. But if he gets it off, uh, yeah, then it's you're... not that easy to kill him. He is still somewhat vulnerable to right clicks from mid one, but if he gets it off, that means he's just gonna full staff Firefly away and or jump you and yeah. lasso you. And commit. At that point, things are not looking good for you. They may even start considering giving MSS like the later Aegis if he's got the slots for it, but. Puppy not taking his turn, but... Radiant's top tower is under attack. <laughs> Radiant's top Envy, though, tower. will grab his as he yeah. bulldozes down that top tower. Puppy needs... He's the, the Yule Scepter buyer, it looks like. He's got it queued up for now. I think they perhaps might be slightly regretting not anyone with how the siege happened in that bottom lane, the constant x -Man. Having a way of forcing out those BKBs, or like if you use someone stop the X back, you may not get the kill, but at least forces like a Bristle or a TA to preemptively BKB, and it opens up a way to t take a team fight. They are gonna initiate here on the TA, shipping away for now. But Vada is forced to BKB, and they're gonna hope to follow this up. They're gonna lock their position. Still a decently long BKB, and the damage is simply not there. No real BKB piercing lockdown. Just the hook to. Temporarily interrupt, but hey, force out a BKB, force him back. Might put NP more on their heels for the next. Yeah. His BKB is approaching that kind of like five second mark, but I mean, the more I think about it, I don't actually think that's necessarily an issue. You mostly just want the BKB to hit buildings. Yeah, 10 seconds means you're hitting buildings longer, but I think for Fata, he's able just to use the shorter cooldown of the BKB to do it more often, so. Again, finds a DD rune, not using the bottle. Again, a bit surprised that he's not opting to try and hold on to these runes for actually hitting buildings. Ready to join the fight at any moment with the BOTs, should Secret make a move out of the base. It does feel a game where, yeah, we're, we're gonna have to see Secret make a bold, aggressive play at some point. The gold age is gonna keep getting worse and worse. We're up to 19,000 now, it's only going one direction. And he's way. KB commitment forward from Bada looking for structures, but countered by the glyph. Turns back for Yapsor. Oh, that Ghost Scepter, I believe. And now is the the end. The fun might begin for Secret. We're gonna look to roast him and completely slaughter Bada, turning him on his heels. TA for breakfast. Will it be Envy for dinner? That's the question. The Secret chase forward. They still the hook. Swing and a miss. Good juke there by Pylite Die. Relocate gonna be ending soon and coming right back into the waiting arms of his old comrades. Down he goes. Some big kills there, especially that TA. And more importantly, just getting any kills. Secret can finally leave their side of the map, start to push out these lanes, perhaps reestablish map control. This is a window for them, gods. Forcing a TA buyback opens up a, a new win condition for a Secret that perhaps didn't exist. It puts him in a spot where if you kill that TA again, there's a buyback, suddenly you're forcing high ground you're taking racks yourself so they are going to go down this middle lane they push incredibly fast with the luna if they can find themselves in a safe position problem is going high ground against oh. batrider is one of the hardest things to do and i think that may throw them off and the roche timing is right for okay. secret into the pit they go they don't have their full complement of spells if and he wanted to buy back and commit but you you do that and you lose a fight in the pit and all of a sudden secret are even in this game. Yeah. After that last fight, Puppy's got a Yule Scepter now, so it won't just be the Tornado to try and do with the X. They've got a Yule Scepter as well, and 
Puppy just taking this one up will help finish off Roche, and that's going to give MP two lives in the upcoming fights. And perhaps more importantly, it takes it away from MP. So chances of a siege are looking a lot slimmer with the tools to deal with the X. We've seen very few big relocate saves, even now at 50 minutes. Count them on one hand, is less than that at most. So you don't, you can't rely on the X. You don't have the extra lives. Uh, you haven't seen the relocate plays. A poorly timed BKB could really end up fighting your own team in the back. Don't think we're going to be seeing too much sieging from NP for the next five, six yep. minutes or so. I mean, Luna just buys a full Scotty now, so we're going to see her actually have some way to slow a bit through the BKBs. Just be a lot tankier. All the extra stats, the HP, the armor help survive the, the TA burst damage a bit. So She's like full on kite mode now between the Scotty, yep. the Hurricane Pike, even the Master Madness. I think the other big thing with coming back in the late game, it's not just about getting the gold, but like your opponents get these level 25s, get these crazy good talents, and you don't have them. But the longer this game goes, we're going to see Luna hit her level 25. Plus 15 all stats is pretty damn nice. That's additional stats to go with all, all of her pre-existing items. and. Heroes like Invoker as well are going to see a lot of benefit from that. MSS was on the path towards Secret, but not able to find the jump he wanted. He has to blow BKB charge back in away. Did previously pick up a Shadow Blade, looking for that extra edge in any initiation scenario. Won't find the opening he wants, and MP not been able to find openings. And credit to Secret, you're up against an Io, a Bat Rider. Even the Kunkka for that extra bit of mobility and Infected Secret on the move. They might want to jump Envy here. Envy, oh, that greed could come back to punish him. Ice Pass there. Poke forward as well, and the Cogs can keep him stuck in the wrong neighborhood as they drop the Macropire. Oh, the Scotty slow as well. He's still pretty tanky. Touchstrike coming through. will pop the cheese. Round two, Bada says, I'm here, baby. I got your back, Envy. They turn it around. They will bring down the Invoker. Out for 100. He's going to fight back immediately. Also cracking through the ages. And now able to deal with the Luna. They're going to isolate MP, bring him down to the trap was set. Agent 3154 had a plan all along. Wowzers. Not the target you want to go on. Not the target you want to find when you smoke up. A bristle back with hot solar press, BKB, and cheese. If he doesn't have the cheese there, he goes down. But that was just not the thought made for secret. He, I, I, he was not baiting that at all. He just was like, oh, I'm just going to go farm here. But I think he knows he's tanky enough to survive a gank like that in secret. Did not respect his and now the siege continues in earnest with the boat crashing in an MSS flying high. They turn back, but what do they want to focus on here? Deathly Blast slowing them down, preventing them from taking objectives. The BKB is going to wear off. They might not be able to convert this into another lane of Rax. Yeah, very hard. Ag snakes on the high ground. They'll reset here, but that Invoker spam is such a nuisance. Now the Ag snakes as well. So much spam, so much stall. Fada stun, pushback, tornado, endless. Just irritation. And he's just ratting top. He's like, screw this. We're not fighting into the next act, so let's just take the fight elsewhere. He'll go for but the they top might act. Hey, they're going to lose their DA. And now Owie's in trouble. Tries to make it up to the high ground, but Kezu on the chase. Keeps the vision there. Finds the impale as well. Right through the trees. And now Burrowing. <laughs> Dropping the carapace too. He will match the stun AUI. Bring him down as well. Three have fallen. Their Luna's respawned. Radiant they might have time yeah. to push at least to a tier two. Radiant Don't know if they're able to get towards the NP base. But if they don't, then Secret are down a crucial Invoker buyback yep. with a second and even third lane potentially in danger. So Secret feels like still a lot of pressure on them, gods. Envy got a tier three tower at top. The creeps got the bottom range racks, but at this point in the game, those are small claims for a big push with Luna down. Losing those three kills is a much bigger deal. Still a big gold lead, but strategically Secret are in this game. They can force out buybacks now. That's going to cut into this lead. The first is already coming out. They may not have to buy back TA. Bat Rider respawning, or I don't know if he wants to buy back with 20 seconds, is a dangerous hero to push into. But the thing for Envy is they don't have much stall. They don't have much spam. The boat's really the main tool, and Envy standing out in front, but they don't have that vast array of abilities to just keep them completely locked Envy team down. So Envy able to get onto the tower, and Envy makes his move forward. BKB committed turning his back. He did grab the Octarine for an extra bit of survivability in this fight, but doesn't have a slot for it right now as he's going to get focused out. Poke shot is there, pushing him back. The relocate save at long glass. It's pie to the rescue. Now Invoker showing the rainbow as he deploys a big deputy blast. Lasso's there. Can they keep this hero locked down? Trying to focus on Yapsor, but he's not dead just yet. Highlight die being brought back and will take Envy with him. 
As Yapsor is on the wrong side of the cog, they haven't cracked no. the rack. No, Yapsor! But he makes it out! Are you kidding me? The ball's on this man! Doesn't have buyback either. We didn't get to mention it, but used it in the previous fight as well, so... He had the gem, he had no buyback, and he just goes scepter, TP out, hands off the keyboard. Put the shades on. Oh. What was a cucumber? Swag play from him. Not still secret though, didn't take a key objective here. Just the tier three. Yep. They uh, have to be careful. If mid one gets caught, that's pretty much checkmate. You need him to stall and you also want him to buy back. So they're still on the precipice. Kind of the point with the game where it's much more about buybacks and winning team fights than taking a lane of Rex. Like one lane of Rex doesn't mean anything. Getting Megas does, but you're only going to do that by winning that team fight, forcing your opponent's buybacks, or killing a, an opponent like an Invoke who doesn't have buyback. So. Things like sieging one lane don't matter quite as much. Split pushing for MP and taking all three lanes, that can help. And you get to see how good the secret high ground really is. It, they, MP just have to spread them out. They tried to do it with MP pushing top earlier, but so much spam, so much control, tight ramps to force your way through. Now they're going to commit. GKB jump forward from Fada. He's going to look to bring down a range rack. Just right away. He doesn't quite finish it, but... Good damage there. Yep. And at this point, like you said, the BKB is really just a sieging item more than anything he's, for MP. He's doing this to make sure the X pullback is successful. And MP's like, I got a BKB too! Check it out. No, it's that 5 second BKB, 55 second cooldown. No big deal. Unless Secret Smoke at you, and that's exactly what they're doing, so... Oh, Envy out in front for now. Gonna ship his guard so he stacks up even more armor for the upcoming fight. All according to Kaikoku gods. But... This smoke, not sure if Secret want to risk anything, like go low ground to high ground where NP was waiting, even though he had no BKB, would have likely been a better fight for NP, so get some wards down if possible. Try and clear out some enemy wards and Secret will not find much with this play, it looks like. You can just feel the tension now between the teams where the moves earlier in the game were very confident from NP, perhaps the jitters. Affecting them. Certainly, these players have seen their fair share of long games. But definitely you wouldn't case. necessarily know it. Yeah, old secret with Puppy and Envy on the same team at some of the longest oh match God, times they, you've the ever old seen. old Envy Ember Spirit games where the, yeah. the strat was wait until I have like three rapiers and buyback. <laughs> and yeah. then we'll push. See, we'll see another X BKB here. Fata X up. That's the plan. Jumping in will take down the range, and now turning back for the melee. How do you initiate if your secret? The lasso starts things off, and it's actually not the fight the way you want to take it. As Yaxor's been caught, no jump for him. The clock's out of the picture for now. He's not dead, though. The Eclipse comes in. Range down on AUI. He will drop. Now Envy in danger. BKP stands his ground, survives for now, and Envy will survive. Great save from Pi. He's going to pay for it with his life. And they now look to sound the retreat. They got the raid frag. They've only got three structures to go here. Pi will pay, but has buyback. Keeps the core in fighting yeah. shape. Kezu, though, is on the chase. Has the four staff available. Ooh, Might be able to Bata. close the distance here with Bada. Has a blink and will use yeah. it again. Jumping up to the high ground. Still mid one in pursuit, though. Secret are not ready to give up the chase just yet. It was Pai who did a very early relocate to pull the TA away, but an essential one. There was a great tornado initiation from mid one's invoker. He caught two heroes, the Kunker with the TA, and if he doesn't relocate the TA, then that's the BKB-less TA. That TA has no defensive capability, so it was a, a must-relocate situation to save Fata. Uh, here's and, another tool to maybe deal with the siege. They have the E-Blade, but again, when you're BKB, you, you don't really care too much about this item for Kazu. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. Maybe more for saving himself or a teammate against the TA. True. Fighting against like the Bloodthorn initiation. Like if he gets jumped on with a Bloodthorn, he, I mean, he's got the Lotus Orb, but he may want to be able to Lotus Orb like a teammate or something. So. You really would love to use that for the lasso. Yeah. How things develop from here. MP have struggled to break high ground. A range Rax is all they have to show for their last like 20 minutes of sieging and that 20k gold lead is now just 7,000 with the buybacks being consumed and it's, I wouldn't even consider it a 7,000 gold lead. They've got too much farm on the TA and 
Like Tia's got 38k net worth. You don't get 38k value out of this hero. The, the because she gets she gets kited. There's a clockwork oh. in the game. There's the invoker to worry yep. about. And even like the, the items, like having a refresher in your stash, you're not getting 6k, 5.2k gold worth out of a refresher in your backpack. T is not a hero where a refresher is like amazing or anything. It refreshes a BKB, so like the the way uh -oh. the farm is being used is not efficient. That is it. That Envy is always the one secret of trying to go on this game. Yeah, he's, his positioning's been great. That's actually definitely been the. One of the best parts about his play. Ah, you say that, God. But Seeker come in from the rear. Yeah, so there with the hook. He's gonna find Pi. Gets out of the cogs. Maybe into trouble though. Is he somewhat trapped on the far boundary of them? Envy working on mid one. Can they focus him down? Fada in tandem with him. We'll jump oh, him, but the e -blade. E blade helping for now. Keeping that invoker alive. Still, he's roasting. Lasso will end him. He has to buy back. He's out for two minutes. He has no choice. He has to re-engage an LMP. Patient on the eclipse. Let's it fly. Locking Envy down. They're gonna deal with that armadillo. They will finish him off. And looking for more now. Is Secret find their footing, people crashing through, taking the TA down too. It's an ultra for MP, and MP might have to buy back a rainbow of buybacks for in an instant. They say we can't afford to let Secret push. And just like that, the game has fully swung Secret's way. They are now the ones in control. They have the buyback advantage. Still no buyback and invoker, but they can make up for that if they can secure this Roche. Oh, Kazu. He knows a pick here when they have the buyback advantage could just flat out win the game. And is looking though. Rushing towards the pit. They that think that Roche has been taken, but it has not been contested yet. His puppy starts it off. Of course it's on Envy. Now the ice pad, the follow up's there, but MP will get last of first trouble. The BKBs, Vivid from bottom, they're gonna jump that Luna. Do everything they can to bring her down. The Lotus Orb is there. Yapsor as well with the save. The Cogs proving too much, and now the Deputy Blast. Mid one, raining in the damage, left uncontested in this fight so far. They're not hitting the Invoker. He's gonna deal with that Kanka, taken out of the picture. Pie off to the left, unable to engage. They never got MP. Kanka's dead for 80. Pie's on the run. NP are in a lot of trouble, and they might be able to find NV2. Pi's gonna TP out back towards safety. They really want to jump NV is the question. Secret say, like let's it. take a breath. Let's reset here, get these lanes pushed out, maybe try to go back to the Roche pit. But the fights, gods, the fights are not feeling very NP favored right now. They have used all five 5x. The Kunkka cooldown about ready, but doesn't have the cash for it. Secret with what, like eight to ten lives maybe in this next fight are gonna have a big power play on there. Yeah. Yeah. Even if Luna dies here when she's gone on, she had buyback. So it's the Invoker who really has to be the target to jump. But now Invoker is gonna have his, his buyback book. But buyback not being there covered by having this Aegis. So he's no longer even an ideal target in these fights and makes things very difficult. Kezu's item usage, the E-Blades, his play this game has absolutely been fantastic. Like, I gotta say, he's been the MVP for Secret so far, keeping them in this game with his high ground offenses, saving his teammates when he's needed. He's been the IO of Secret as far as being able to bail his teammates out when he when they need it. And, and finally, the big damage items are coming for MP and MKB. Nearly ready if he wants to purchase it. Yeah, that, that is a huge pickup this game. Probably wants the buyback. Yeah. Hey, you know, six or three minutes in, let's, let's, let's we can have a buyback. But yes, MKB will make a big difference against Solar Chris and give him some nice extra bit of damage output if he wants to commit in that direction. Oh, MP. You gotta. You would love to be a fly on the wall right now in the team chat, wouldn't you? And just see, have they maintained their calm? What's the strategy? It's a situation where it's very easy to get tilted in yeah. fights like that. A lot of level 25s coming out. Jakira actually goes for the extra ice path stun over the macro pyre. It feels I mean, like they don't really need damage. They just need more control. Yeah, so. I'm kind of. Yeah, that, that's the thing. I'm. Kinda, I think both of these level 25s are amazing on Jakiro. It's a. It's like almost 50% more stun with the Ice Path, but the Macro Pie Pure and Piercing Immunity could be great against Bristle and TA, of course. Oh. Well, you know, some thought this would be a faster patch. Gods. It's secret. Uh, Say nah, we, we could take it late. It's the first match of the day. Yep. Wake up, everyone. So they're going to take it slow here. Secret. Again, as good as it looks for them the last couple minutes, they are down structures. A couple of sloppy mistakes, all of a sudden it's NP grabbing Megas. And it might just be NP stealing this game right back. Play it cool, but they now get the rune control. They now get to roam the map, knowing they have an insurance policy or two to work with. 
Envy. Show himself first. But now the tornado comes out. Catching Envy. Up target to Wrangle, but they are going to chip at him. The MP's there. That slows him down. He sticks around, doesn't want the creeps to get to the high ground. He knows the Luna will mow through these buildings with those bouncing glaives. Yeah. Now that the tier three's down, you really can't afford to let her hit structures for free. MP, the ultimate siege engine in this game. And they have to, to let Nate go. I don't know if it's worth defending one lane in practice when you have to buy back. And then he's going to get caught again, but really, he doesn't have to commit here. MP is fine just sitting back, hitting creeps. Knocking down structures, has the Lotus Orb, keeping him alive for the time being, keeping healthy. And now, turning onto the melee racks is going to bring that first melee down. Secret on the board as far as key structures go now. They'll back away. And P, I think like you said, God, just content to try and wait out these oh, buyback timers. They would happily give up like four racks if it means getting their buybacks back right now, I feel. Going down Mega Creeps is like uh, definitely a big thing at this stage of the game, but losing four racks, not the big, I mean, it's, it's something, it's a lot of gold. Um, it is going to help keep the lanes pushed out, but it's not the end of the world. It's not like a game-winning play. Buybacks is what they want, and the problem is the changes mean this buyback corner is even longer than it used to be. It's still 2 minutes 50 seconds before all their buybacks come back up. Well, those spirits died for a good cause, yeah. as far as secret. It's what, it's just AUI who didn't use his buyback or didn't have his buyback in that last fight. And at the end of the day, a Kunkka buyback is unlikely to be a game changer in a game like this, so... Probably see Secret make a play for another lane of Rex. Fairly soon, they want to use this time where the buybacks are down. We're always seeing the timestamps posted, anytime buybacks being used, teams are very wary of opponents' buyback cooldowns. And they are long now, too, so you really gotta you make the most of them. As Envy shows himself in the mid lane, he actually never ended up buying that Octarine core. I guess sold it right away, but does have it queued up again. I mean, there's only so much a Bristle can offer at this stage. Really just a giant meat shield more than anything. Try and see what they can do with the jump here, the top lane. We're gonna send Fada bottom with the X to do a bit of split push and keep those lanes out, but MP is quick to breach the base, and in comes the Glaive. They're gonna mow through that tower, now they start to bounce. Rax in danger, they've gotta jump. The BKB last is there, the Lotus Orb. It looks like just a split second to play as MP is he gonna get forced caught. out. This is alive for now, though, and they're taking down the structures. Again, it's Yapsor into the fray. He's buying them the time they need. They've taken down the melee, the range as well, and MP is gonna find a kill on top of it. Nice little cherry for him. MSS down out for 100 seconds. Oh, guys, that's some crucial control out of the picture. They don't have a vote either. Secret with the full five-man squad staying in NP's front door. They're not going home. They're taking this game back as they turn onto the throne. Tier fours taking heavy damage. NP now even seeing the Eclipse rain down. It's MP just standing his ground though. Envy's unafraid. He can't find a way in. And Fod is controlled. The EMP's there. Nice wall keeps him in place and now tier four number one down. Down. tier four number two it. down there's the hook it's yapsor again he holds them in position the deputy plus two a double trouble combo mid one slamming the door the sun strike as well icing on top secret firing on all cylinders slaughtering np three have fallen it's gonna be four no buybacks in sight make it five secret come back from the abyss and they will take game one a 20,000 gold comeback to start things off. NP had all of the map control in the world, took all the towers, took multiple brooches, and could not find a way to break through the secret high ground defense. They managed to get that first lane of racks. It took them a long time, but they could never get the mega creeps. And man, was secret just resilient in defense. Well, I hate to say it, but maybe shades of...